ओम सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा निधा हृदय विश्व विधा गुरवंदनम बालाखबोधाय क्रियते तर्कसंग्रह therefore we saw dravya last time dravyatva guna jati matvam okay dravyatva jati matvam or guna vatvam va that is the definition of vastu right it belongs to jati of dravyas and the ashraya for gunas uh, manisha can you hear me at the back come in front come in front share seats come in front no yeah. share seats na come in front yeah please come yeah. okay so dravya clear or any any questions on dravya okay what we saw last time lakshana ha itrebya ha huh? let me do the guna then i'll come back to that yeah that question i'll handle after i've done the gunas okay okay uh so i'm saying yes yeah yeah for a definition to be valid there should be no avyapti avyapti meaning is not covering all the topics or ati vyavti is over extensive so it's including too many things into it like if i was going to say defi- define human beings two legged ones or human beings what happens here is it ati vyavti or avyavti all two legged ones are human beings extensive why the monkey the monkey the crow the bird all of them will come into the yeah two legged ones therefore that's avyapti okay what will be uh, ativyapti sorry that will be ativyapti what will be avyapti for human being definition come on you'll think avyapti not extensive enough not covering everything huh? huh? yeah if you are def- restricting the definition to only men or women then there is avyapti because the other is left out okay then the other is left out avyapti that will be called now you getting the idea of avyapti and ativyapti either it is too extensive or not extensive enough okay yeah shoot an evolute okay an evolute means there are actual changes happening chemical this that etc happening like from the monkey human beings have evolved manifestation is cloth and kurta kurta is a manifestation of cloth what what is the change in the kurta that make or in the cloth to make it a kurta only form changes nothing else no intrinsic changes happened whereas in an evolute some intrinsic changes happened okay yeah yeah and that's what is being dismissed yeah correct so the question is now we will make and vedanta will make a statement all evolutes are also only manifestations you will make that statement only you will have to go to a deeper level genetic level atomic level then you find everything is a manifestation everything is an arrangement of particles and molecules 
That's why you'll cut and chop genetic coding also, no? <laughs> Only you're using a chemical scissor, not the physical scissor, <laughs> to cut and chop. Yeah. So, that is where the difference will come. Yeah. Beg your pardon? Okay. Is there a Dvaita Vedanta? Okay. What do you understand by the term Vedanta? Sashi, if that was said 10 years ago, I'll accept it. Not after the sitting of 10 years. What does Vedanta Sara define Vedanta as? What is Vedanta Sara's definition of Vedanta? There is... Ah. What is the Vedanta Sara definition of Vedanta? Right in the beginning it comes. Vedanta Nama Upanishad Pramanam. Vedanta is a name given to the Upanishads. Now reframe your question. What is your question? See, if you are going to forget your question, why should I be answering you? <laughs> Fair enough. Na? If you are forgetting your question in five minutes time, why should I be answering your question? Because you will forget the question, you will forget the answer also. <laughs> Is there a Dvaita Vedanta? Yes. What do you mean by that? Okay. The, why, what? Vedanta is the name given for the Upanishads. Now, what is the message of the Upanishad? So, Upanishad, the teaching parampara has been going on. Sadashiva Samaram Bham Ramba, been going on. So, then, Vyasa analyzed the whole teaching tradition, put it into sutra form. Then Shankara came later and he wrote a commentary explaining it. So that teachers are guided, there is no problem of teachers making a mistake. Teach the Bhashya, you cannot go wrong. <laughs> then later, some writers came, said this is too difficult to understand. So they made it Vishishta Dvaita. They qualified it. They presented only Ishwara as everything and you are part of that. That became Vishishta Advaita. Then, another champion came up later. He said, this is also too difficult for people to call it. Therefore, he interpreted the Upanishad as Dvaita and called it Dvaita Vedanta. These are later traditions. This is not the original tradition. Now, giving benefit of doubt to all those teachers, Ramanuja Acharya, Vishishta Dvaita and Madhava Dvaita Vedanta, giving benefit of doubt to them, I will say they knew the truth, but they made it easier for their followers who couldn't follow Advaita as a starting point. They made some compromises. But the problem is, after that, other writers came. So instead of using it as stepping stones, because we all start with Dvaita, no? when you are born, what do you start with? Advaita? You start with Dvaita only. Until you come to a class, you, start, you are in Dvaita only. No? Then, then you understand Ishwara a little bit, part and whole thing, that is you are comfortable with. So, instead of using it as a stepping stone, they hold on to that as fact. Now they will be, the people who are on Zoom will be having a problem because this connection has gone off. <laughs> but reconnecting, yeah. Reconnecting, yeah. 
So because of that, okay. So because of that, this problem is there. Okay guys, today connection is bad, huh? it may come and go like this. Whether it is my Jio connection or my Vodafone connection, both are bad. So, you may have to catch up with the recordings if it doesn't really come through. Okay. Yeah. So, this is why there are those two schools there. So, these two schools exist now. As branches of thought, as branches of philosophy, they exist. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they are presented moksha as there. You tell me, then, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, because that is a problem. If I take that there is duality, how is moksha possible? They present a moksha. What is the moksha for them? Moksha for them is heaven going, merging with Ishara, being part of Ishara, etc. But that's not real moksha. Until I can say Aham Brahmasmi, there is no moksha. Until I can say Aham Brahmasmi, there is no real moksha. Big your pardon? Yeah, there is some sort of belief involved. See, but remember one thing. Since the Veda mentions 14 dimensions of existence, we take and Veda is a pramana. We take it as paroksha jnanam, indirect knowledge. This is a pen is direct knowledge because perception. That there is heaven etc. Indirect knowledge. We take it as indirect knowledge. We don't take it as mere belief system. Why? Because the Veda is accepted as a means of knowledge. So what the Veda says has to be a means of knowledge. It can't be a belief. Can't be a belief. Getting it? Yeah. 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 Therefore, both of them, the Vishishta Dvaita and Dvaita Sampradayas are going on. Yeah. See, in for example, in Dvaita Sampradaya, it's all about Vishnu Bhakti. Which is not a problem. You know, last class I was talking about their astrology. They are all Dvaitins. The whole Matha Subramanian is Dvaita Sampradaya. But they have no problems with worshipping Shiva or Devi or anything like that. Some Dvaitins have it. That is the issue. Those are the issues that come up. And that is why it makes it problematic. Okay? So that is what has fragmented the Hindu society to an extent. These type of wrong belief systems coming in. But at the same time, they accept all the devotees. Yeah. Hmm? Dvaita, Iskon is Dvaita based. But see, there are a lot of traditions like this. Okay. Since we are studying other darshanas, you must add. Uh, people from Gujarat are here. Yeah. Vallabhacharya. Yeah. He called it Shuddha Advaita. Why did he call it Shuddha Advaita? Because God is also real, world is also real. Everything is real. Okay? Everything is real. So because they said everything is real, that's another issue that's coming up. <laughs> so it becomes very bhakti oriented. See, remember in Dvaita, you cannot have too much of knowledge coming in. Whatever knowledge you have will be to back up your bhakti. That's why I'm saying there's a big difference between being a Krishna Bhakta and being Iskon. Let us finish one at a time. Your mind, na, you learn to be focused. Okay. 
सो ऑल दी स्कूल्स वल्लभाचार्य और निकम्बरा देर आर अबाउट फिफ्टीन डिफरेंट स्कूल्स आर ऑल ऑफ देम आर अनएबल टू कनेक्ट वॉट यू आई डू इज देर एनी अदर वे ऑफ कनेक्टिंग थ्रू नो आई थिंक थ्रू ओनली थिंग ना जूम स्टार्ट मीटिंग मीटिंग आइडेंटिफिकेशन इज देर नो नो आई एम ऑन माई फोन माई वीडियो ऑफ ओके लेट बी कनेक्ट फर्स्ट connect and then else or they will have to they will have to yeah so in any dvaita in any dvaita sampradaya all that you can do is bhakti there is nothing else nothing else is available but bhakti What what is that? Agoris are Advaitins, but it's a very different worship school, Tantric. The Tantric worship. So don't compare those Tantric schools like that with these schools. These are schools of thought. Those are Tantric energy work practices. So you can be an Agori, be a Advaitin, or you be an Agori and be a Advaitin. Generally, they tend to Advaita because they'll make one statement: Shivam Bhutwa. Shivam or Chayet, be Shiva or first and then worship Shiva. Be Shiva, that is not working. Putting video off is also not working. <laughs> Today the connections are like that. Keep going, keep going. Hmm? Yeah, that's it. I mean, I will keep connecting up. Let them listen as whatever they can. Yeah. so this is where the issue comes in any dvaita school will have this problem okay so their moksha will be heaven based my kunta based heaven based call it golok brindavan that's the latest on the list okay yeah. so experience oriented bhakti schools will be like that no? see to be a bhakta is one thing and to follow a dvaita sampradaya is another thing bhakti who doesn't have bhakti all vedant in the bhakti without bhakti how can you be a karma yogi what is bhakti what is bhakti by the way your emotional response depending upon your understanding of ishwar your emotional response depending upon your understanding of ishwar so ishwar is there in vedanta advaita vedanta also so bhakti is there Emotional response is there. That is not the issue. The issue is making a philosophy out of that worship. That's where the problem is. Yeah. Any other questions before we go ahead? Or clear? Okay. Mike, hmm? Mike is. The connection itself is not on. <laughs> You're only seeing the screen. Yeah. <laughs> connection itself. Today the connection is poor, so it will be like that today. You know? Even the previous class it was the same. Yeah, the connection is showing quite full, but something is wrong with the whole thing. Even yesterday onwards it's there, but yesterday. Yesterday was manageable for the evening class. It was manageable. But today is gone off. Yeah. So part of the game, you can't avoid it. <laughs> it is not the locale because Andheri Swami had the same problem yesterday evening. Her class is the same. Anyway, so now coming back to Tarka. Dravyam clear? Okay. Any object? Anything that you can experience in short will be called a drug. Okay. Then guna, huh? 
what is guna okay rupa rasa gandha sparsha this is very clear your fine sense organ they all will tell you what gunas are no they are telling you what gunas are then parimanam measurement parimana here is measure magnitude sankhya is number number is a quality no how many people 20 people the number the guna the quality prataktvam difference what accounts for differences what is the difference between you and me they will all the differences is gunas some yoga now here is where the technical things will come joining together is a guna because everything cannot join with everything only some things can join with each other some yoga prataktvam what is dictating some yoga which is vibhaga if there is some yoga there will be vibhaga this joining we came together now we are divorcing each other vibhaga so guna can separation be a guna how <laughs> good one <laughs> you will say i am a divorcee <laughs> huh? i am married what is that it's a guna it's a quality i am married or i am divorced is a guna okay <laughs> it's a guna vibhaga ha huh? yeah yeah paratvam paratvam is that which is away gomuk is paratva has paratvam for us gomuk has a guna of paratvam of being remote is away from me right now aparatvam this laptop has got enjoys aparatvam because right in front of me aparatvam gurutvam many of us are struggling with this gurutvam is heaviness <laughs> I put out weight. I be heavy. Oh yeah, Gurutvam, Dravatvam, Dravatvam is fluidity. What is enjoyed by water, etc. Sneha, Sneha is not love. Sneha is viscosity. These are scientific qualities also. Okay, viscosity is Sneha. The property in oil, etc. Gum, etc. Viscosity. shabda the word guna sound buddhi they put it as a guna why buddhi is your thinking your thinking has to belong to a sentient person therefore it becomes guna sukha happiness joy guna dukha guna ichha desire guna dvesha prayatnam effort to move about karma dharma dharma guna we take dharma we the way we discuss dharma dharma it will look as though it is an entity but there is no entity called dharma dharma is the quality is the quality that resides in a dharmi what about you what you present as gravity etc is also dharma yes it tries to reside in a mass material because the attraction between two masses is gravity therefore it has to reside in a mass mass is dravyam so even gravity will become guna dharma dharma will become guna samskara tendencies definitely they are guna iti chaturvimshati guna okay Now, how will you define guna? How will you define a guna? Huh? Huh? You're giving me an English word. You're not defining it. Dravya bhinnatve sati sat samane tum guna. Dravya bhinnatve sati is different from the object, but 
it appears as one with the object samanitvam is there color is guna the color of the cloth color is guna but different from the cloth but it looks one with the cloth it exists as one with the cloth are you getting it dravyatva bhinnatve sati it's different from the dravya different from the cloth why i can dye this any other color also i dyed it saffron dyed it saffron dravya bhinnatvam but samanyatvam okay samanyatva samanyavan guna dravya bhinnatve sati tat samanyavan guna even though it's different from the dravya but then you have, if i use only this much of a definition it will have ati vyapti why ati vyapti what will cover that should not be covered now look at it this is how you think logically it is other than dravya but it appears along with the dravya there is something else that will appear with the dravya but it is not guna it is has a separate category what am i doing karma correct dravya bhinnatve sati is karma other than the hand but samanyam is there therefore ati vyapti nivarnaya karma shabda is to be added therefore dravya karma bhinnatve sati samanyavan it is other than dravya and the karma that is done by the dravya but it appears along with the dravya gunavan because karma doesn't have color right etc no? making sense how it is presented it is all there in the text actually <laughs> yeah. it's all there in the text if you want the sanskrit definition is there dravya karma bhinnatve sati samanyatvan gunaha it is there. the first line itself okay. then the question is asked, what about lightness softness etc there are various degrees of gurutvam and hardness therefore they are not included separately as guna now because now this is a part of their philosophy their school of thought because guna is considered different from dravya because it is considered. to establish this point they will say when a thing is created the first moment of its creation it doesn't have any gunas then the guna joins up with first mo- in a momentary now this is not an observed fact this is comes into exist into their philosophy because dialectically it comes into it because you are making a difference therefore guna has to inherit in the object dravya if guna is to inherit in dravya dravya should be free from that guna what is the vedanta standpoint on this now i'm going to ask questions in this class also okay <laughs> what is the vedanta standpoint as far as dravya and guna are concerned ha huh? dravya is real <laughs> that is what my question was starting what is the difference look at my question very specific what is the thing between guna and dravya hmm in vedanta define gold for me describe gold for me not an ornament describe gold then you will understand huh? so are you defining gold or you are giving me its qualities so if this is all only nama roopa that means what we don't make a difference what you talk about as substance are only qualities qualities what is gold 
atomic weight you will give me which is weight gurutvam yellow color all the thing that you will describe about gold will only be quality where is gold you are describing qualities malleable qualities good conductor of electricity qualities the le- one of the least reactive metals qualities it's a metal quality classification but guna has to exist in substance therefore what is the substance sadayo saumedam agram asit ekameva dvitiyam brahman all these are manifestations can you see the vedanta stand the vedanta is a non dual thing whereas tarka is dualistic okay so understand the difference between the two otherwise you know you can get carried away with tarka <laughs> but understand the way they define and use the language nobody uses language with greater precision than the tarkika okay all right so clear about guna and this thing guna clear guna and all the gunas that momentary starting that's all so at that time it does not have any characteristics correct so because yeah because they have to prove that dravya is the adhisthana of the guna whereas in your observation you will find all that you are talking about is only gunas yeah. yeah see even science goes through the same issues science also goes through the same issues that's why they are talking in terms of particles this that etc building blocks of matter because they have matter and matter has qualities therefore what is fundamental building block of matter there that's the inquiry they follow so this yeah actually has to be nirguna <laughs> that's, that's what we are looking into it they are also saying the same thing but it is only momentary because the very definition of dravya was what that which will become the basis for gunas <laughs> whereas in vedanta what is the basis for the vastu what is the definition of the vastu what is the vedanta definition of reality satya jnanam anantam exactly yeah <laughs> can you see that the whole difference that comes in <laughs> don't get caught up because there is scientific thinking there is this ancient paradigm here in tarka and there is vedanta thinking so be clear what is what okay <laughs> be clear i was be very confusing so some of them when that momentary thing is without the guna then what is that dravya <laughs> dravya and how many dravya there are nine dravyas so because why are they keeping differences in dravya because all gunas cannot go into all the dravyas no except for but there is not a guna it is a it is a dravya by itself abhava okay abhava okay for them abhava is no absence of something na so it's not a dravya but they are not put abhava as a guna also pada it's a padartha it is a meaning of a word you know it is experienced but it is not dravyam padartha is all that you experience all that you experience belongs into dravya guna etc 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 okay. but abhava is not a guna <laughs> yeah. otherwise we'll have to say abhava can be a guna of any dravyam <laughs> yeah but it is not a guna <laughs> clear up to now
Any of the gunas not clear? Because the commentator has… Yeah. Karthik had something? Yes, Swamiji. I just had a, a clarification. Uh, when, when we talk about, for example, the potness of a pot… Yeah. Now, potness is the guna. Correct. So, does pot become the dravya in that case? Yeah. See, potness, we have, even though you are presenting it as guna, all the qualities of the pot that make a pot a pot. In Tarka, we will say, the potness has to reside in a pot. So, literally speaking, potness will become a jati. Potness will not become a guna. <laughs> a jati, because all the qualifications of a pot together is called guna, no? Yeah, because pot is prithivi, prithivi is dravyam, okay. that way. Pot is prithivi, okay. prithivi is dravyam, yeah. Okay? Is that momentary part? Yeah. Do you refer to it as nirguna dravyam? Hmm. Not nirguna satyam. No, nirguna dravyam. Dravyam, nirguna dravyam, yeah. For the moment. Yeah. The moment of its creation, it is called nirguna dravyam. Okay. Then after this padartha, the next padartha is karma, action. So in karma, action, he says, ukshepana, apekshepana, akunchana, prasarana, gamnani, pancha karmani. All karmas are broken up into five. Okay, classified into five. What is that? Ukshepana, upward movement. So, check on upward movement against gravity. Now, because otherwise upward movement, how will you define upward movement? Hmm? Against gravity. <laughs> Why? Because what is up for you is down for the American. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now look at it. How will you define karma then? How will you define karma? Chalanatmakam karma. Any movement is called karma. Chalanatmakam karma. Any movement is called karma. Now, to make it in Nyaya language, what do we have to say? Dravya anyatve sati, other than dravya. Guna anyatve sati. Correct? Yad dravya avatishtati. As chalanatmakam karma. <laughs> you will have to make it like that. <laughs> to make it a precise definition. Because if you say, Dravya abhinnatvam or dravya abhinnatvam if you say or dravya karmavan if you say then it is ativyapti into gunas also but you have put karma as a separate category therefore it cannot become guna therefore you have to say guna dravbhinnatvam other than guna other than dravya but located in the dravya because all action needs a locus or doesn't need a locus What is this movement? Apekshanam. Huh? <laughs> okay, Ukshepanam, Apekshanam. So, how do you define karma? Chalanatmakam, any movement is karma. Any movement. Any movement. So, I am just standing. Huh? Yeah, standing is not an action. <laughs> Technically, if you are going to define. We are not defining it in Vedanta terms, akarmani karmaya pashyet, karmani akarmaya. We are not defining it like that. We are defining it in functional terms. In functional terms, if you are sitting down or standing, just standing in one place, will you call that as doing action? Any change in the 
द चेंज ऑफ स्टेट चेंज ऑफ स्टेट चलनात्मक कर्म अपेक्षण आकुंचन कॉन्ट्राक्शन आकुंचन प्रसारण एक्सपैंशन गमनम मूविंग अराउंड एक्चुअल मूवमेंट फिजिकल मूवमेंट फ्रॉम यू टू दे दे टू देर एक्सेप्ट वेर एस चलनात्मक कर्म कैन ओनली ऑल्सो बी शेकिंग अराउंड नॉट नेचुरली मूविंग दे फोर कर्म विभाग नाउ इफ यू वॉन्ट टेक्निकल डेफिनेशन ऑफ एक्शन इन द दीपिका इट इज एर संयोग भिन्न सती संयोग समवायी कारण कर्म ओके ही पुट्स इट डिफरेंटली संयोग भिन्न सती इट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कमिंग टुगेदर जॉइनिंग टू थिंग्स आर जॉइनिंग टुगेदर कर्मा इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट और नॉट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम दैट बट कर्मा इज कॉसिंग द जॉइनिंग ओके कर्मा इज कॉसिंग द जॉइनिंग ओके संयोग समवायी कारण Let us say I am walking across and shaking hands with you, shaking hands some yoga, some yoga bhinnam. It is different from some yoga, but what is it? It is a cause for the some yoga that I walked across. Now that that movement is called karma. <laughs> so can you see how they technically put it? I coloured this saffron. संयोग भिन्न सती संयोग समवायी कारण वॉट कॉज द संयोग दट कनेक्शन दट इज कॉल्ड दट इज कॉल्ड दस थिंग क्लियर अप टू नो Bigger pardon? No, that is goes into dharma dharma. <laughs> that will be that will be technically called as dharma dharma. Yeah. So dharma dharma will become qualities for what type of thing you are doing? Yeah. So this will that will become not the guna of the karma because karma cannot have guna. Dharma has to have guna. Therefore, you will have that guna. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Just join him once. Correct. So the same thing, na? Some yoga, yoga is part of the flip sides of each other. So one is mentioned, the other is also there. Yeah, which causes that? Exactly. Anyone knows whether science has gone into what defining what an action is? Ah, inertia, etc. So that is all the laws of motion. Law only laws of motion are there. Yeah, they are the laws of how motion happens and things like that. You have not defined action per se. Have you defined in science? Do you remember, Soren? As an engineer, you may remember. No, even I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is work. Huh? Change in displacement is called work. Yeah. Work done. You display. Yeah. Displacement is work. Yeah. Yeah. Clear up to now, karma. Okay, If karma is clear. I will come back to all this again. All right, <laughs> because I want you all to get a picture first. <laughs> come back to it again. <laughs> okay. Karma is defined as karanam for the samyoga. Karanam for the samyoga. Yeah. 
then there is something called samavayi karanam, asamavayi karanam. But that we will see when we come to that, okay? Yeah. What is that? That is different, yeah. Samskara comes in, no? Yeah. See, samskara is a guna that happens as a result of something that you have done. This is not a karma. See, all right, the, I can see the confusion. One second, one second, one second. Understand this, where the confusion is coming from. We say shodasha samskara, 16 samskaras a child should undergo. I mean, including death, old age also. But those are samskaras that something is done and the result and impression is on you. Upanayanam is a samskara. But what is the samskara there? A karma is done for which the impression is there on your mind. So, when we are saying it is a samskara, we are using it in general terms. But we are, the samskara actually refers to what happens to your mind. That is separate. What is karma? Things coming together, some expansion happening, some contraction happening, some movement happening. Isn't that what is happening in the ritual? Dharma, dharma comes in. Gunas of dharma, dharma comes in. As far as the person is concerned. So which relieves an impression. That impression is samskara. So when we say shodasha samskaras, we are referring to the result of that karma. These karmas will create certain positive samskaras in you. Therefore, these are called shodasha samskaras. Death, what is that? Ukshepanam, the jiva leaving the body, finished. Then you do your samskaras, you burn your body, do what you want. <laughs> the jiva has left the body. Because otherwise, how can you burn the body? <laughs> They'll become murder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's not correct. So when you that's where I think your question came from, the samskaras. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, Vyoga, that's also fine, karma. When you can say some yoga, then Vyoga also comes into the picture. No? <laughs> yeah. So you are just saying any movement. Chalanatmakam karma. That's why. Is there chalanatmakam? Is there movement? Karma. Manasam karma. That's why he says manasam karma. We put a qualification there. Ati vyapti nivarana. So it doesn't become ati vyapti into your physical thing. So no manasam karma. You add the word manasam to it. Because chalanatmakam is there. Verbal karma, vachikam karma. Chalanatmakam. Because there is movement happening. Lot of movement has to happen. <laughs> Lot of vibrations have to happen. So, Chalanatmakam Karma, that basic definition holds. Yeah. Then you are looking at what type of things happen. Manasika is a movement of thought. Thought, exactly. So, Manasika Karma, exactly. So, can you see how some of the Tarka ideas have influenced all your thinking? Is karma. Yeah. Which bring them together is karma. Then we'll have to see what is the locus of karma. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Is it a rule that karma has to exist in a sentient being? No. Because gravity, etc., will come into the picture. Movement of planets will come into the picture. Okay? Yeah. Therefore, dravya binnatve sati. Can you see that? It's other than the dravya. Then what do you say, Samanyam? What is common? Common, general qualities. Okay? Param aparamcha dividam Samanyam. Okay? Param and aparam. This is very generally put. Like if I... Okay? Samanyam. There is certain Samanyam of all of us. Human being, Samanyam, we are all human beings. 
जनरल क्वालिटी देन वॉट इज अपर एम क्वालिटी मैन वुमन फॉर द फॉर दिस रेफरेंस मैन एंड वुमन दैट टाइप ऑफ क्वालिटीज विल बिकम अपरम लिमिटेड परम इज मोर परवेसिव अपरम इज लेस परवेसिव those who are below 40 even become more less the thing na say below 45 it'll become even less probably only two people will be here <laughs> below 45 <laughs> plus, plus, plus 60 more yeah, plus 60 <laughs> param <laughs> can you see more general 50 plus more param <laughs> are you getting the idea samanyam these are all general qualities general things what is samanyam what is common what is general what is commonly known by people samanyam okay then vishesham नित्य द्रव्य वृत्त विशेष अनंता दिस इज वॉट दिस ऐडिया ऑफ विशेष इज वॉट गेव दिस नेम वैशेषिका फॉर दिस फिलॉसफी वॉट इज विशेष वॉट डिफरेंशिएट वन थिंग फ्रॉम अनदर थिंग वॉट एवर इज द कॉज ऑफ डिफरेंशिएशन इज कॉल्ड विशेष वेर इज अ where does it incur nitya dravya vrittaya it is there only nitya dravyas now what is nitya dravyas what is nitya dravya prithivyadi chatushtya paramanaya the atomic the paramanu of nitya dravyas prithivi akasha all that the paramanu of those that means what they are saying one atom is inherently different from another atom now this is not accepted in science unless you say parmanu is a molecule a molecule of water is different from a molecule of oh <laughs> a wood wood is included into prithvi it is included in the water element will be included in water the non water element will be included into prithvi understand this the categorization of akasha vayu agni apa prithvi is different from science prithvi is not a molecule in science is there a molecule of prithvi because it can have so many materials in it <coughs> it can have iron it can have hydrocarbon which is wood it can have silica it can have organic matter different molecules it can have bacteria it can have viruses all healthy ones there was there's no molecule called prithvi or atom called prithvi but remember this was dialectical because it is dialectical and the influence of the five element theory came across in all philosophies see the five element theory of creation that is mentioned in the veda was only a simple paradigm because observed na akasha vayu agni apa prithvi so based on their observation they veda gave you a theory of creation which is mithya which is not a problem but here they take all these differences as real therefore the problems come up but remember it's just a paradigm non scientific paradigm does it work yes it works 
even though non scientific of course everything doesn't have to be scientific to work and in scientific also there are contrary par paradigms what is light wave motion or straight line wave, wave no without wave motion there can be no energy all energy is move in wave motion but you know the simple optical instrument called your spectacles is based on the straight line theory of light therefore since wave it since light is a wave motion this spectacle should not work <laughs> but it works <laughs> it works nobody told light or nobody told my glasses it should not work <laughs> it works <laughs> according to the principles of aerodynamics which is scientific engineering the bee cannot fly but somebody forgot to tell the bee that you can't fly <laughs> the bee flies <laughs> i know <laughs> therefore there are a lot of non scientific things also which work is it good to have a scientific temper definitely is good to have a scientific temper but is also good to understand the limitation of that both ways it has to be okay yeah therefore here it is yeah swami ji in fact the way the way they are presenting the prithvi here yeah is what exhibits the five qualities right rupa rasa gandha yeah okay. yeah yeah so It's not even a molecular approach. It is basically whatever exhibits those. It's it's an experiential approach. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's an experiential approach. Yeah. The uh, Akasha Vayu Agni Yapa Prithvi. It's an experiential approach. It is not based on molecule or atom. But here they are trying to make it scientific by saying it is all made up of. Because see again experiential. Anything can be divided up into smaller and smaller and smaller more particles. How do you think they got it? by making atta okay <laughs> you are grinding it fine na no? coarse grinding fine grinding correct hai ke nahi for mulaga pudi coarse grinding <laughs> for making idlis fine grinding <laughs> correct so experiential that been the thing can be broken up broken up broken up how do you think the modern science also presented an atomic theory the starting point was same observation the whole thing is based on observation things can be broken up into its constituents so what is the fundamental constituent here they were influenced by the five element theory therefore they stuck to that model now they are saying that they are eternal substances on what basis they are saying that these are eternal your experience they are beyond the basis they are saying in their experience everything can be broken up into fi finer particles so experientially then the experientially correlated elements and organs ha nitya dravya yes because again you see people being born and dying you see animals being born and dying you see trees being born and dying do you see the earth being born and dying how many creations have you seen therefore आकाश वायु अग्नि आप पृथ्वी इन तर्क इस कंसर्ड नित्य द्रव्य ऑलवेज देयर इवन इन साइंस 60 सेवेंटी इयर्स बैक दे टुक टाइम एंड स्पेस इज एटर्नल बिफोर द बिग बैंग थियोरी देर इज समथिंग नोन एज द स्टडी स्टेट यूनिवर्स इन साइंस the you know is always there it'll keep changing but it'll always be there then that got replaced by the big bang theory so theories keep changing yeah. theories will keep 
changing and that's okay, okay that's fine. Therefore, here they took this as Nityam, because experientially that's how it is. Vayu is always there, earth is always there. <laughs> Do you see Vayu being created anywhere? No. Fire is always there. You're creating in your kitchen, what are you doing? From one fire you're creating another fire. Or So they'll say fire is inherent in wood. And you are, that is what you're bringing out. Yeah, correct. Because what is fire? Combustion is fire. So friction can create combustion. No. Even if there is pralaya, the Nitya Dravyas will continue. Okay. Okay. Therefore, the Visheshas. Then there is Samavaya, etc. Okay. Which he also okay. So that may have to I may have to describe a bit elaborately. Good place to stop. Okay. For all those who couldn't, who had disturbances in the net connection, we'll put up the recording. Recording has come out fine, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Om Tatsa, good place to stop. <laughs>